Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. past uh, these uh, leadership uh, uh, models we have talked about the linda member exchange model then aor model harshe and blanchard's model uh, then we talk about the decision making uh, normative decision making model then we have talked about the fiddler's model and then we have talked about uh, the path goal theory model in continuation of this different style of leadership now today we will talk about the charismatic and transformational leadership style is there so here we will talk about the charismatic leadership uh, types of the authority systems transactional leadership transformational leadership uh, charismatic versus transformational leadership uh, charismatic and transformational leadership common case studies as usual the case study research papers and the book recommendations we will talk about is there so whenever we are talking about the charismatic leaderships uh, leaders are passionate driven indi uh, individuals who can paint a compelling vision of the future right through this vision they can generate high levels of excitement uh, among the followers and build a particularly strong emotional attachment with them is there right so therefore in that case uh, whenever we are talking about the leadership right so with the leadership it is always a uh, um, uh, uh, concern with the vision vision is there so naturally when we are talking about uh, uh, the leadership uh, uh, then definitely a vision will be there so generate the high levels of excitement hmm? that is just this generation of high level of excitement that is a, a strong emotional attachment uh, and con and connect basically the word which i would like to use here for the strong emotional management uh, attachment is there that is the connect so therefore in that case uh, we will find that is uh, whenever we want to make this uh, particular uh, uh, this relationship relationship between the leader and the followers then it becomes very very important that is the, the we are having the con that connect uh, uh, with the that vision emotionally connect uh, some characters charismatic leaderships can result in positive and relatively peaceful organizational or the societal changes are there uh, and therefore in that case whenever we are talking about uh, the uh, implication Hmm. Now, practical implication of this charismatic leadership is that that is the peaceful organization is there or the societal change is there. Mahatma Gandhi and Nelson Mandela have done a commendable work for their uh, respective countries. These are the examples are there. On the downside, when this passion is for the selfish gains, history uh, mournfully suggests it can have an equally devastating effect on the society. Examples might include the Hitler of Germany or the Kim Jong Un of North Korea. Charismatic leadership is resting on the devotion to the exceptional sanctity, heroism, or exemplary character of an individual person. Uh, end of the normative patterns or the uh, order really revealed or the uh, ordained by the, him. So. Uh, then we, we about the Max Weber, uh, we will talk about 1970s charismatic leadership was studied primarily by the uh, historians, political scientists and the sociologist is there. Now this is, this is becoming the uh, very much uh, important uh, for us that is the if you want to create the history. Everybody whenever he is in the leadership position then he wants to uh, put a landmark, he wants to uh, put a uh, footsteps so that is the, uh, the others uh, can, can follow it and then he wants to be the historians also. So that is the historical decisions, historical steps right and that, that will be the uh, achievement of this charismatic leadership will be there right. So earlier it was the historian, scientist and sociologist uh, and they, they have followed uh, this particular uh, type of these charismatic leaderships are there. Of this uh, the early research Max Weber arguably wrote uh, in 1964 the single most important work where he maintained that societies could be categorized into one of three types of authority system that is a traditional one. Uh, legal, rational and the charismatic is there. Now in the traditional authority system, the traditions are the unwritten laws of the society dictate who has authority and how his authority can be used. Now this is very, very important, there is a positioning, you see earlier in the society what uh, has uh, unwritten, unwritten 
means well accepted uh, as a as a tradition that is the uh, who has the authority and how his authority can be used right so therefore it will be decided by the society society will decide so, leader was dr driven by the conditions of the society. Um, the transfer of authority in such system is based on the traditions such as passing power to the first born son of a king after the king dies. And therefore, in that case the society was uh, having this dictation that is the power to the first born son of the king after the king dies is there. In the legal rational authority system, a person possesses the uh, authority not because of tradition or the birthright like in the previous case we have seen in the traditional authority system, but because of the laws that govern the position occupied. Right. For example, elected officials and most leaders in non-profit or publicly traded companies are authorized to take certain actions because of the positions they occupy and the powers in this position itself rather than in person who occupies the position is there. And therefore, in that case once the um, like a manager you can say when the manager becomes a charismatic leader, how he is becoming the charismatic leaders? When he has occupied a particular position and on that position he what he is doing that is he is having that uh, the decision making style in such a way that he is creating uh, on the basis of that position he creates uh, that authority and in this case that legal rational authority system that is making these uh, particular aspects in the case of this uh, that how uh, the uh, that charismatic leader he has been evolved. So, he has been evolved by the position. However, in the previous exa example in the tradition, uh, traditional authority system, it is by the tradition of the society, the person has occupied the uh, that particular uh, position of the leadership. But in the charismatic authority system, when we talk about people derive authority because of their exemplary characteristics, charismatic leaders are through to possess uh, superhuman qualities or powers of the divine origin. Right and here uh, now the question arises that is whether are you able to develop that superhuman qualities. Right? What are the superhuman qualities that we will see in the traits of the charismatic leaders? Are the powers of divine? Right? That is that we say that is the he is having the God element. Right. So, many people for our Prime Minister uh, Sri Narendra Modi ji they say that is a, it, it is the element of God. So, powers of divine origin that save them apart from the ordinary mortals are there. The locus of authority in this system rest with the individual possessing these unusual qualities. So, there are certain unusual qualities are there which, which the individuals are possessing and as a result of which they are, they are, they are be, becoming the powers of divine or the superhuman quality. It is not derived from the birthright or laws. It, it is not because that is the they, they have born in a particular uh, 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 this uh, uh, family or they have uh, they have given the legal any authority relationship by the position only. So, because the many uh, many country heads they may have the posi uh, positioning power right, but not necessarily they will be having the charismatic leadership. According to Weber charismatic leaders come from the margins of society they emerge from the margins of society and emerge as leaders in times of great soci social crisis is there. And whenever they serve the society, I would like to connect here, we will talk later on also that is a servant leadership and leaders in the times of the great social crisis that will be doing. These leaders focus society both on the problems it faces and on the revolutionary solutions proposed by the, uh, the leader. So, uh, thus charismatic authority systems are usually the result of a revolution against the traditional and legal rational authority systems. So, charismatic leaders they are coming the out uh, against or out of the uh, box uh, as a result of uh, other than the your traditional systems of the leadership style is there or when your legal uh, that authority position relationship is there or the position uh, uh, leaders uh, position is there and then they are emerging as a charismatic leader. No, it is not like this rather than they, they, they first they are coming up the margins of the society and secondly they have coming out of the revolution. And as the revolution takes place uh, the, the leaders uh, these charismatic leaders uh, and uh, they emerge. Here we will find about that transactional leaders who are the transactional leaders are there. 
the debate surrounding charismatic leaders uh, leadership shifted dramatically with the publication of the James McGregor Burns leadership Burns 1978 and Burns was a prominent political scientist who had spent a career studying leadership in the national political arena. He believed that leadership could take one of the two forms transactional or the transformational is there. First, we will take the transactional leadership. Transactional leadership occur occurred when leaders and followers were in the some type of exchange relationship. What type of the exchange relationship are, uh, is there to get the needs meet? So, therefore, they, they, what they are fulfilling? They are fulfilling the needs of each other. The exchange could be economic. Hmm? So, therefore, this can be the economic exchange or political exchange or the psychological exchange. And examples might include exchanging money for, for work, votes for political favors, loyalty for consideration and so forth. So, therefore, transactional leadership which is coming to the give and take exchange relationship is there and therefore, it is having the exchanging money for work. And uh, uh, there, uh, what happens that the leader is in the position because uh, because he is giving that salary pay packages is there, or there may be the votes for the political favors also. Uh, there, in, in that case, you will find that is a, the transitional leader has emerged as getting contributing to the society, and society is giving him the votes. Or the loyalty for consideration is there, and therefore, in that case, because the, he is having the loyalty for the organization and organization uh, is giving something. Transactional leadership is common, but tends to be transitory in that there may be uh, it, it, this is very important word because you will understand difference between the transactional and transformational leadership on the basis of this transitory. Transitory means with the period of time. So, therefore, in the case of the period of time in that there, there may be no enduring purpose to hold parties together once a transaction is made. So, once transaction is done forget about it. Right. So, therefore, in that case in the transactional leadership it, it is existing, it is existing till the transaction takes place. Burns also noted that while this type of leadership could be quite effective, it uh, did not result in organizational or societal change and instead tended to pre perpetual and legitimate the status quo also. So, therefore, this type of leadership will be if it, it did not result in the in societal change right rather than it will be the perpetual and legitimate the status quo and therefore in that case you will find this transaction leadership is uh, is uh, have been the with the period of time which is the working while when we are talking about the transformational leadership the second form of leadership suggested by burns in transformational leadership is which changes the status quo by uh, appealing to followers values and their sense of higher purpose the transformational leaders articulate the problems in the current system. Uh, so, therefore, here it is, it is the changes the status quo, while the transactional that is going with the development period of time and then it stops. But here it is challenging the status quo that is the followers values and their sense of higher purpose. So, they are comfortable, they are working in a particular style of the value systems and uh, here uh, the, the, the leader what he does, he changes. The challenges and changes. Transformational leaders articulate the problems in the current system and he finds out that what are the what is wrong is going on in the current system and have a compelling vision of what a new society or organization could be and that is the change. Basically, this is related with the change management is their transformational leadership. Transactional is also is a change definitely, but they, then in that case transactional is the periodical changes there and therefore, in that case it is a give and take and the, uh, the directions have been given, um, the followers are performing and the money is paid a loyalty for consideration and all these aspects are there, but here it is totally a change. And whenever we are talking about a change, a vision has been given and that vision is creation of the new society. So, uh, normally what the leader wants? Leader wants to transform, transform the organization. Why uh, the transformation leadership to take it to the next level, next level by totally changing, by the followers values are changed, their sense of higher, uh, uh, the higher purpose have been changed and this new vision of the society is intimately linked to the values of both the leader and the followers, but is it not forcefully, it is not a push technique of change.
right rather than it is the uh, he gives a vision transformational leader just says that is no uh, this this is this uh, our society has to be the tech savvy society technology oriented society there has to be science and technology behind uh, uh, the principles and therefore it should be art also because we are, we are studying the management so we always talk about the balancing between the science and art but the science that is about the change of the technology they are developing the uh, society making it the modern society not the western society i am talking about i am talking about the modern society that that is for the purpose the vision has to be given and it represents an idea that the ideal that the congruent with their value systems are there but uh, we we be careful if you want to be the transformational leader by studying this then in that case yes you can change you can create a vision but that vision should not change the value system that is the beauty our society culture society value societal norms that that should not be changed but ultimately what we then we are changing we are changing the society with the modern look and that is the technology based look is there i am giving just one example and this example can be applicable for the organization also so organizational values will not change the norms will not organizational norms will not change but the organizational look will change organizational will be more tech savvy so according to burns transformational leadership is ultimately a moral exercise in that it raises the standard of human conduct standard of human conduct is raised not the change the implies that the acid test for transformational leadership might be the answer to the question do the changes advocated by the leader advance or hinder the development of the organization or society it's a very big question now dear friends you please understand that is whenever any leader is advocating a change where it leads to whether it is leading to the development of the society or it is leading towards the hinder the development of the society because it, if it is for the short term so you will find it is it is a development but long term it is the hindrance so be careful that is the there should not be the hindrance that is your original our original values organizational values societal values that remain has to be same transformational leaders are also skillful at reframing issues and uh, they point out how the problems or issues facing followers can be resolved if they fulfill the leader's vision of the future and therefore leader should be enough uh, um, skillful that is with the remaining your values how he will make making the changes that will be there for their problems the current problems will be changed and resolved if they fulfill the leader's vision of the future uh, and these leaders also teach followers how to become leaders in their own right and incite them to play active roles in the change movement is there so whenever we are talking about the charismatic versus transformational leadership all transformational leaders are charismatic but not all the charismatic leaders are transformational Hmm? Transformative leaders are charismatic because they can articulate a compelling vision of the future, you know. So, and therefore, in that case, what they do, they are creating a future uh, and strong emotional attachment with the follower. However, this vision and these relationships are aligned with followers' value systems and help them to get their needs meet. So, therefore, in that case, uh, when we are talking about the charismatic leaders are there they are more focused with the value systems of the followers whenever we talking about the charismatic leaders who are not transformational can convey a vision and the form a strong emotional bonds with the followers but they do so to get their own needs met that is a leaders need meet is there so both charismatic and transformational leaders try for the organizational or the societal change the difference is whether the changes are for the benefit of the leader or for the benefit of the follower and uh, naturally um, what you will be looking for you will be looking for the benefit of the follower however the leaders can work for their own benefits also but definitely we we will be seeing this vision and these relationships are aligned with the followers are there so there the, here it is becoming very very important that is the emotional connect with the followers is very important and then they should be developed now i would like to take this certain comparison between the charismatic leadership and the transformational leadership is there a leader is the head of the show 
and he is a charismatic leadership vision fulfillment by stimulating followers to leaders vision and the charismatic leaders are most likely to emerge in crisis situation from the margins and behavior aimed at leader driven goals uh, and promote feelings of obedience and dependency in followers. While in case of the transformational leadership, leader is open to followers inputs and participation. Uh, vision fulfillment includes your follower and leader vision. It is not followers to leaders vision only, but it is inclusive of followers and leaders vision. Transformational leaders can emerge at the different levels of the organizational behavior aimed at encouraging teamwork and commitment to share the goals are there. So, here, here in the case of the charismatic leadership, the behavior is aimed for the feeling of obedience and dependency in followers. The follower should follow the leader, while in the transformational it is uh, encouraging the teamwork and commitment to share the goals are there. Uh, through though there are several fundamental differences among the charismatic and transformational leadership, many researchers like the Bess and Bass 2009 who, uh, who do not differentiate charismatic from transformational leadership or see charisma as a component of the transformational leadership. Uh, there are different common threats to both charismatic and transformational leadership area to leader characteristics because if it is the leader oriented right then in that case then what is the characteristic of a leader followers characteristics if it is a transformation as a situational characteristics it is for both. So, common leader characteristics are the vision both transformational and charismatic leaders are inherently future oriented they involve helping a group move from here to there. Hmm? So, therefore, in that case uh, they recognize the shortcomings of the present order and offer an imaginative vision to overcome them. In both the cases whether it is a charismatic or it is a transformational both the leaders, leaders they want to go for the future vision. Uh, uh, then uh, rhetorical skills charismatic and transformational leaders have super rhetorical, rhetorical skills that, uh, uh, that heighten followers emotional levels and inspire them to embrace the vision. So, therefore, both are uh, what uh, they are uh, catalyzing emotions of the followers, both the contents of their speeches and the way they are delivered are vitally important. Image and the trust building, leaders build a trust in their leadership and the attainability of their goals through an image of seemingly unshakable self confidence, strength of moral conviction, personal example of the self sacrifice and the unconventional tactics to behavior is there. This is the uh, image of the leader is there. Personalized style of leadership leaders share strong personal bonds with followers even when the leader occupies uh, a formal organizational role. It is a personalized leadership style that seems to be responsible for the feelings of empowerment notable among the followers are there. So, therefore, it is a personalized style of the leadership is there. Now, whenever we are talking about uh, that is the uh, identification with the leader and the vision, um, the followers bond uh, with uh, a leader because uh, they may be intensely dissatisfied uh, with the status quo and the see the implementation of the vision as a solution to their problems are there. While in case of these heightened emotional levels are concerned, uh, where the leaders are having the high emotional level in, in the both the cases whether it is, it is a charismatic or it is a transformational we have seen in both the cases it is becoming very very important the followers emotions. So, common follower characteristics are there that is they, they, they are um, the uh, uh, they are driven followers are driven by the emotions and leader offers to do all they can to maintain them their emotions are to be protected including getting followers to think about their dissatisfaction with the status quo that is the why they are in the current situation and there are certain problems and making impatient appeals directly to followers are, are sensitizing them that if this current situation is not favorable and therefore, it is better that is the we are, we are creating for the future goals. Willing subordination to the leader. And so, they, they are not only emotionally charged, but involves the followers submissiveness to leaders authority and followers often naturally and willingly submit to the leaders apparent authority and the superiority is there. And therefore, in that case it, it, it is it is becoming the uh, naturally and willingly what followers are doing because the vision is created. The vision which has been created by the leader which is emotionally connect of the followers and therefore, there is nothing like the resistance, they become the followers, 
they become the followers because they are they are naturally and willingly because of the common vision or goal. These feelings of empowerment. So, what will happen? That is when they will become the leaders. What will happen? That is they they will be having uh, this particular uh, achievement with the help of the empowerment. Leaders set high expectations while expressing confidence in their abilities and providing ongoing encouragement uh, and support. Somewhat paradoxically, followers feel stronger and more powerful at the same time, and uh, uh, they willingly subordinate themselves to the leader is there. So, what are the common situation characteristics? Crisis is one. An important situational factor associated with the leadership is the crisis. Um, although it may not take uh, make uh, every leader look charismatic, but it may set the stage for the particular kinds of leader behaviors to be effective. Social networks. Attributions of the charisma will spread more quickly in organizations having well established social networks, where everybody tends to know everyone else. So, therefore, that will be the social network will be developed. There will be the downsizing. People believe that downsizing destroys the implicit contract between the employer and employee and it greatly diminishes the odds of the charismatic leadership emergencies there. So, if there is a downsizing then definitely it will go into the uh, diminishes the odds of the charismatic leader. Time. Another dimension is very very important is the time. It takes time for leaders to develop and articulate their vision uh, then heighten followers emotional levels, build a trusting relationship with the followers and, di and direct and empower followers to fulfill the vision. Now, here I would like to take a very beautiful case study that is a keeping up with the Bill Gates. Bill Gates inherited intelligence, ambition and competitive spirit uh, from his father a successful Seattle attorney. After graduating from a private prep, uh, prep school in the Seattle, uh, he enrolled in the Harvard, but dropped out to pursue his uh, passion computer programming. Uh, Paul Allen, a friend from the prep school presented Gates with the idea of writing a version of the basic computer language for the uh, Altair uh, 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 8801 of the first personal computers on the market. And driven by his competitive nature, Gates decided to he wanted to be the first to develop a language to make the personal computer accessible for the uh, general public. He and Allen established the Microsoft Corporation in 1975. Gates passion and skill were programming. He would work hard to meet the extremely aggressive deadlines as he set for himself and his company. Eventually, uh, Gates had to bring in other programmers. He focused on recent co uh, college graduates. We decided that we wanted them to come with clear minds, not polluted by some other approach to learn the way that we, we like to develop software and to put the energy into it that we ought to was key. In the early days of Microsoft, Gates was in charge of product planning and programming while Allen was in the charge of the business side. He motivated his programmers with the claim that whatever deadline was looming, no matter uh, how tight, he could beat it personally if he had to. What eventually developed at Microsoft was a culture in which Gates was king. Everyone working under Gates was made to feel they were lesser programmers who could not compete with his skill or drive, so they, com they competed with each other. They worked long hours and tried their best to mirror Gates uh, his drive, his ambition, his skill. Everybody put the very high efforts. This internal competition motivated the programmers and made Microsoft one of the most successful companies in the computer industry and one of the most profitable. The corporation has created a tremendous amount of wealth. Many of its employees have become millionaires while working at Microsoft. Bill Gates currently one of the richest men in the world during the 1990s. Bill Gates net worth grew at an average rate of $4.34 million per day, that is $200 million per week. Gates needed a castle uh, for his kingdom, so he built a much uh, talked about uh, house on Lake Washington. The house is uh, lies mainly uh, underground and looks like a set of separate building when viewed from above. The house was conceived as a showcase for the Microsoft technology. Uh, it took $1.60 million, 7 years of planning and construction and 3 generations of computer hardware before it was finally finished. Now, these are the questions for your assignment. Would you classify Bill Gates as a charismatic or transformational leader? 
because when what, what we have discussed and studied that is the charismatic and transformational um, question arises um, uh, this development of Microsoft uh, by the leadership of Bill Gates where do you classify. Consider the followers and employees of Gates what are the some unique characteristics of Gates followers that might identify him as a charismatic or the transformational is there and therefore identify that is the exactly what characteristics are there. Uh, this is the research paper role of CEO transformational leadership and the organizational factors on product innovation performance. Uh, the purpose of this paper is to examine the direct and indirect effects of the CEO transformational leadership on product innovation performance and this research investigates the mechanism between CEO transformational leadership and product innovation performance to understand the process through which the transformational CEOs uh, exert their influence is there. Uh, this particular research study is, uh, is a quantitative research data were collected from 269 manufacturing firms in the Thailand through a mail survey. Uh, this research applied a two step structural equation modeling process. The result indicates uh, that is the uh, CEO transformation leadership indirectly affects product innovation performance through an innovation culture, organizational learning and the new product development processes there. So, CEO transformation leadership has a strong effect on innovation culture and organizational learning uh, as, uh, with the NPD process which significantly lead new product development process which significantly leads to product innovation performance. By integrating the knowledge of the leadership and oper operations management fields this study helps extend the understanding of how leaders at the top of an organization and it influence the new product development processes and product innovation outcomes. For practical implications to be more effective CEO focusing on product innovation should develop their skills and behaviors of transformation leadership to foster the innovation culture and organizational learning is there which in turn will affect the product innovation performance is there and therefore, we can learn from this uh, particular case study that is the how charismatic and transformational leadership uh, styles that can lead to the, to the, uh, uh, the great success of the organization. Uh, this is the book transformational and charismatic leadership uh, the road ahead uh, and this uh, in uh, this book uh, uh, is a 10th anniversary edition of transformational and charismatic leadership road ahead uh, in a theoretical and empirical work and the professional practice issues associated with the transformational and charismatic leadership. So, uh, uh, the, uh, new research ideas are there insights and directions for the future work is there. Uh, these are the different re references uh, which you can use for your further studies uh, and uh, for these uh, uh, detailed interest mm, and uh, this is all about the charismatic and the transformational leadership which we, we have talked about and the, I am sure that this will uh, help you to develop uh, a different style of leadership uh, by understanding the followers, connecting with the followers and developing the followers with the emotional connect. This is the uh, end of the session, thank you.